Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us take a look at how to configure Zipkin as a stream server using Kafka and Cassandra. Now, why would we need a Zipkin kind of tool? And why would we talk about distributed tracing? We all know that microservice is a collection of individual services that run on their own. And every service is isolated from other services and every service is as its own individual capacity and capability. So in this case, let us take a look at the simple, uh, you know, picturization of microservice architecture. This is not a right uh, architecture, but at least it gives you a picture or the visualization of how the tracing works. A request comes to an API gateway. It goes to M1 microservice, then it goes to M7 microservice, and then it goes to M13 microservice. Similarly, maybe the re response might come from M13 to M7 and then to M1 and API gateway. So imagine a scenario where you want to debug this particular flow. Without distributed tracing, think of how much of log information you will have to analyze. What logs you have to take a look at. It would be very difficult to actually understand where the request is going to flow next and where the response is going to come next. With the help of tracing and with the help of tools like Zipkin, Datadog, you can visualize the information flow inside your microservice so that it would be easy for debugging and tracing a microservice architecture. Zipkin is going to make use of the Spring Cloud Sleuth component to obtain the log tracing informations and display them in a colorful UI picturization. Spring Cloud Sleuth implements a distributed tracing solution for Spring Cloud components. Sleuth consists of spans and tracers. A span is a unit of work. A set of spans forming a tree-like structures is called a trace. Let us jump into our ID and take a look at how this configuration is made. So for this example, first you need to create a Spring Boot project, which is going to act as our Zipkin stream server. So you need to incorporate all the dependencies with respect to these things. So what are the dependencies that we need to include? We need to include the Zipkin dependencies. We need to include the uh, Sleuth dependencies. We need to include the Kafka stream dependencies. We need to include the Cassandra dependencies. So all these dependencies, especially with respect to Zipkin, has to be incorporated in your pom.xml. So I have added the Zipkin stream sleuth dependency, the starter stream Kafka dependency, then I have the actual Zipkin's dependencies here, along with the Cassandra, Zipkin Cassandra dependencies, uh, the Kafka is added here, the Cassandra driver core is added here. So these are the dependencies that you need to add in the Zipkin stream server. And then in your main application of Java, you need to add the other rate of Zipkin stream server. And since this this particular project is going to act as an Eureka client, so I have added the enable Eureka client here. Then let's move on to our application.yaml. In our application.yaml, we need to include the cloud stream Kafka dependencies as well as the Cassandra configurations here. So you need to add your broker, your Zookeeper node, and your uh, Cassandra details like your contact points, your username, password, uh, your uh, the key space name, all these things should be added here. So these are things that you need to add in the Zipkin stream server. The beauty of the Zipkin stream server is like the key space, the tables, all these details, right? It will be automatically created when you start the Zipkin stream server. So you just have to give the, you know, the contact details, the, the node details of the Cassandra database here. And Zipkin will automatically take care of creating these tables in the Cassandra database. If you, over, if you want to overwrite these things, then you can overwrite the Zipkin uh, properties and then have your own tables and key spaces. Then let's move on to one of the microservices. I have the student microservice here and in my pom.xml let us quickly take a look at what are the dependencies that I have added here to make the stream possible. So here what I have here is I have added the starter sleuth for the spring cloud uh, then the sleuth stream then the stream of Kafka and then I have the Cassandra databases details. And then in the application.java, I don't have to add anything here. So there's nothing that you have to do. Let's quickly take a look at our application.properties. 
So let us take a look at our application.yaml of the student microservice. The application.yaml is available in my config repo and I'm going to use config server to pull that properties and use it in my microservice. So it's going to be available in a different location. Uh, and in this case, right, this is going to be my primary application.yaml and what I have added here is, I have added the, uh, the cloud Kafka binders here. I don't have to add the Cassandra here because the Cassandra is going to be bounded to the Zipkin stream server. I'm going to communicate with the Zipkin stream server using Kafka streams. So I have to add only the broker, the you know, Zookeeper node and the destination path of the you know, Kafka to interact with the Zipkin stream server here. And the other thing that you need to take care in your application code is, let's go to our controller. You need to auto wear a tracer. And this tracer is going to tell when this application received the request and where did the request go to. So you have to create a span from this tracer. You can give a name for the span here. And then once it goes into this, uh, let's say here, in this case, uh, from the controller, it goes to the service. And from service, it goes to the repository. And when it comes back, I'll be closing the trace and then returning the response. So if you do this in all the areas where you need this tracing information, then your application will clearly show the exact flow of the request from each and every service. For this example, I did everything in one service, but Zipkin is very useful, especially when your request goes through multiple microservices because tracing is one of the biggest challenges in microservice architecture. And especially if you have a request that flows through like five or six microservices, then it's going to be very difficult for anyone to debug or understand the application. With the help of Zipkin, you'll be understand, you'll be able to understand the application very easily. You'll be able to see the flow of your request and you'll be able to see how the request, how the time the request got processed. All this information will be available in the Zipkin UI. So now, uh, so I'll quickly show you my service. So here's my service, I've autoed the tracer here, I created a span, and then I've closed the span here once uh, you know when the processing is done. So this this particular tracer, right? You can actually implement this in a cleaner way with the help of aspect oriented programming. Just like how we do this loggers, right? Loggers and uh, you know the controller advice, you can actually implement this tracer so that it always runs in the background and captures the elements for you, irrespective of writing all that spans inside your actual business logic. So let me quickly start the server and then let's try to fire a URI and let's take a look at our Zipkin UI. All right, the server is up and I have the postman here. I'm going to fire a, uh, you know, a post mapping request to the student API. Let's see what happens. So my send is successful. I've got a response here. With the response element here, success recorded to the database, uh, the transaction date, the transaction ID, and the actual request that was sent in the uh, in the initial space. So let's go to a database and let's try to find this in the tracing. So here's the Zipkin key space, which was automatically created by Zipkin, and the list of tables here. So let's let me try to do a select on the tracers table. So here's our trace information of the request. There'll be multiple information here. It would be really difficult to understand it from the database standpoint. Let's move on to our UI and take a look at it. So once you start the Zipkin stream server, right? So this is how the UI looks like. And in the UI, you'll be able to see the list of services available for currently I have only one microservice here. You can even filter by span name if you give a span name there. Let's click on find traces. So here's our trace, it has nine spans here. Let's click on this. So now what has happened with our request? So our request has come to this API student, then it has gone to after body read, then it went to capture incoming request. This is my logging, okay? I'm logging every request that comes into my API. After that, it went into the validator. It has validated the student object. It has validated the address object. Then it went to the controller, which is insert student details. Then it went to the service like service layer, which is insert student record. Then map model to entity, map entity to model. So let's let me click on here. 
and here you could see here the request ID that I set in the controller. It has it give it will give you more information about the trace ID, the span ID, and these are information that you can even set in the Zipkin, which will be useful for anyone who's debugging or taking a look at the flow of the request. So this is how the request flows through your application. And now if you look at this, you will be easily understand the entire application flow with just a click of a button. So this is one of the greatest examples of how Zipkin makes life easy for debugging and tracing a microservice architecture. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos.